Though they are common, white-throated sparrows are anything but ordinary. For one, they come in two color variations, white-striped and tan-striped, that not only look different, but behave differently as well. Interestingly, sparrows of opposite colors are attracted to each other, ensuring the survival of both variations. There are distinctive features like a white chin patch that resembles an old man's beard, bright yellow eye lures, and a stripy head help them to stand out among other species of sparrows. But what truly sets them apart is their strikingly beautiful song, and more importantly, what they did to it. The white-throated sparrow's song is so captivating, it's known as the anthem of the boreal forest. Bird watchers easily remember it by two main mnemonics. Old Sam Peabody 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 or Oh sweet Canada 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 Two whistles followed by a three-syllable phrase. However, by the early 21st century, a new, shorter version of the song emerged, ending with two repeated syllables rather than three. Oh, sweet, canna, canna, canna. This transformation of their song is fascinating, but what's even more intriguing is how quickly it spread. The change began on the west coast of Canada. Before the 1960s, sparrows west of the Rockies all sang the three-syllable version. But by 1999, the new two-syllable version was first recorded in British Columbia. Researchers initially thought the change would remain isolated. However, by 2004, the new song had spread eastward into Alberta. Astonishingly, just one year later, in 2015, white-throated sparrows in every region west of central Ontario were whistling the double ending. By 2019, the song had broken through into Quebec. Now the new song was being heard across much of Canada and the United States. Getting to see something like this unfold in our lifetime is rare. Ordinarily, birds like to stick with their old tried-and-true song. Inventing a new one isn't normally a risk they are willing to take, since it won't sound like the neighboring males and therefore might not be effective in defending territory or attracting a female. Even if a species does change their song, it's usually a very long time before becoming established. In just two decades, the new version of the song spread more than 3,000 kilometers and completely replaced the old song in many regions. So why did this happen so quickly? It turns out that the new song is easier to learn and more catchy. Young sparrows began to adopt it, and as the new version grew in popularity, it became the dominant song. Migration was what played a key role in spreading it. For example, white-throated sparrows from British Columbia, Alberta, and Ontario, Canada winter in the same states, like Texas, Missouri, and Oklahoma. Since they sing on their winter grounds and are very social, this is where they heard and learned the new song from one another. When they returned to their breeding grounds in spring, they brought the new song with them, allowing other sparrows to learn it too. Interestingly, the old three-syllable version still lingers in the far eastern regions, like where I live in the Atlantic. I never heard the new song until 2020 in my area, and it was only in my neighborhood. But as of lately, I've been hearing the new song from even more white-throated sparrows. It certainly hasn't taken over in my area, but I do wonder how long the old song will continue to be heard here. After all, the song from the West was slow taking hold at first, but once it took off, it happened extremely quick. It could be that the original song is in the middle of slowly fading away in eastern North America, too. Time will tell. Curiously, sparrows in Prince George, British Columbia, have already started singing yet another variation of the song. 
It's looking like they are changing songs more frequently than we thought. It could be that females are getting bored of the same old tune, therefore not responding and pushing males to get more creative. And here's a funny thing to ponder. It is possible that the old triplet version could make a comeback in the West. After all, the three-syllable song does still exist. Sparrows from British Columbia could pick it back up. What's old to one population can become new again to another. And I mean, it has been over 25 years since they got rid of the old song. Watching this change unfold is an exciting reminder that birds are capable of adapting and changing more quickly than we often realize. It's worth noting that since white-throated sparrows learn their song from older birds, this means that if an individual sparrow doesn't have enough influence around them while they are young, they can end up singing a version that doesn't sound quite right. I believe I may have witnessed this myself with a white-throated sparrow last year. Have a listen. The song stood out like a sore thumb when I heard it the first time. Although not quite right, it was good enough to have the other males responding back and attracting a female to mate with. Knowing that these sparrows had been documented changing their songs, I initially wondered if I was witnessing a sparrow who was daring to try a new tune. As the breeding season went on, I continued following him, and eventually his song changed to sounding like the normal song. This observation caused me to wonder why he did that. Was he a white-throated sparrow trying to be trendy and invent a new song, or did he not have enough influence around him while young? If it's the latter, the males he was around over the breeding season may have helped him learn the proper sound. But if it's the former, perhaps his bold attempt to be different didn't work out as well as it seemed to me. All very interesting, and goes to show that these sparrows are worth keeping an eye and ear to. As I listen to these white-throated sparrows, I'm reminded that change can happen swiftly in the natural world. Who knows how long I'll continue to hear the classic triplet ending, or if it will make a comeback out west. The future of the white-throated sparrow song is still unfolding. I'm curious to know which version you hear in your area the shorter doublet, or the old three-syllable song? And which one do you prefer, the original version, or the new one? Let me know in the comments below. And here's a couple minutes of white-throated sparrows singing. I hope you enjoy. Happy birding!